evening, I will now call the public portion of the Standing Committee on Government Operations meeting back to order. My name is Frida Marcellos. I'm the MLA for Tabacha and Chair of the Committee. Today, the Standing Committee on Government Operations is holding a public hearing on Bill 23, an act to amend the Public Utilities Act. Today's meeting is being live streamed on the Assembly's social media channels. Due to the evolving COVID-19 situation in the NWT, as well as in compliance with the Chief Public Health Officer's gathering restrictions in Yellowknife, the Legislative Assembly building is closed to the public. Members of the public have been asked to contact the committee clerk for call-in information to join the meeting this evening. As a standing committee, it is our role to review any legislation introduced in the House. The committee review stage provides stakeholders and the public with an opportunity to provide their opinions on whether they support the bill or not. It also allows the public to suggest changes for, for committee to consider by bringing for, forward amendments that they think may help improve the bill. Committee gathers input from the public in the form of written submissions for public presentations to committee during meetings such as this one. Committee considers all concerns brought forward when determining how best to proceed. I'd like to remind all members and witnesses to please direct all comments and questions to myself as chair to help keep the meeting organized and run smoothly. Please wait to be recognized by the chair before speaking. I will now ask all the members that are on the call to introduce themselves for the record. Starting with MLA Cleveland. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Caitlin Cleveland and I am the MLA for Cam Lake. Lisa Semler, Emily Johnson. There, uh, Ryland Johnson, Emily Field, and I first. Emily Bonfrouge. Ron Bonfrouge, Emily Dato. Chair, uh, Jackie Jacobson, MLA for Nanakput. Uh, before I get started today, I'd just like to uh, um, put a shout out to the Orange Shirt Day across the Northwest Territories for all our schools and that. And I'd like to thank the uh, IRC and the Tuck Community Corp and our, our community corps across my riding for the orange sweaters that uh, we're donning and uh, doing the walk tomorrow. And uh, I'd uh, like to thank them again. Madam uh, Chair, uh, today, I bring forward to your to your committee uh, private members bill uh, bill 23 an act to amend the Public Utilities Act. Uh, basically, the bill amends the Public Utilities Act to prohibit the public utility from disconnecting the residential customer electricity service during the period of October 1 to April 30th or when the temperature is forecast to be below zero because the amount of payable over is overdue. 
requiring a public utility to reconnect the residential customer electricity and service, which was disconnected during the period of May 1st to September 30th because the amount payable was overdue. By October 1 or as soon as practicable to prohibit the public utility from installing a device to limit the amount of electricity provided to a residential customer because of an amount payable is overdue and allow the public utility to require residential customers to enter into a payment plan before reconnecting their service. Electricity service during the period of May 1st to September 30th. Madam Chair, that's my summary overview of what I'm bringing forward to the House and to your committee. And I'd like to thank my, uh, my, uh, the help from Toby Kruger, uh, Lawson Lindell, um, for helping me and assist in writing this, uh, the bill to come forward to the, um, to the House. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, MLA Jacobson. Uh, Committee, have any questions for the sponsor of the bill? Well, I'm chair. It's uh, Ron. Uh, go ahead, uh, MLA Sanders. <clears throat> Must see, Madam Chair. Um, must see, um, MLA for Nanatpak for bringing forward this bill. Um, I support it because I have compassion for low-income people. You know, the, the unfortunate uh, people uh, in the communities. It could be up in the Beaufort, it could be up in my Detroit riding communities. Because there aren't many jobs for many of them. And there hasn't been too many jobs created for many of the people. I always bring forward the idea and I brought it forward to the government that we need more make work projects and I believe um, that it wasn't supported. That uh, people had to work, well people have to work for a living, but we've got to make work projects because there is nothing happening anywhere. The diamond mines can only employ, employ you know, certain number of people that have certain kind of training. And the hardship is on the ones that, that don't have anything, you know, emotionally and uh, physically and, and the mental health and with their health. I don't believe it's that population that can't pay the power bill is a lot of people. Could be a certain few. And I always believe that we should get to the root cause of the problem. Um, and it should be upon, you know, the people involved, whether it's ECE or the NWT Housing Corporation. I know the Housing Corporation don't like to expend themselves too much in reviewing a lot of the conditions in their units or the happenings. Because we were told previously that CERB payments, you know, the tenants won't be penalized. But what happens is contrary to what they say. We know, we know that notices were sent to everyone and to me, it seems like it's punitive. You're punishing the people because they collected it. That's not what their mentality should be. They don't have compassion for the people. You know, um, with your bill here, it's going to open up, hopefully open up their eyes to really want to look at the root cause of the problems. And there may be recommendations from this committee moving forward that uh, 
That's what I, I would just like to mention at this time, Masi. Thank you, Emily Bonacruz. Uh, do you have a comment to uh, Emily Bonacruz's uh, submission, uh, Emily Jacobson? Yes, I do, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am fully in agreement with the, the member um, in regards to moving forward with the uh, with this uh, removal of the limiters across the territory. Um, it's not only in my riding, but I know it's across the territory. I was contacted numerous times in regards to uh, from people that were put on limiters that are lower income and elders living on a fixed income, having um, you know and. Basically, in our cultures, what we do is we kids come over, we feed them, and nobody leaves our, our houses uh, hungry. And they've been and they run short, and they have to make decisions on either you're going to buy, like I always said, you're going to pay the power, you're going to pay the water, you're going to buy food, or try to buy clothing. It it it's a juggling act for them, uh, with uh, you know, especially being uh, some of them on the ECNE. Um, getting the CERB payments, the callbacks on that, that the hardships on that. There's so many different kinds of hardships coming up um, across the territory in our in the riding too. Um, we don't have nothing going on in regards to work. Um, all the jobs are taken, uh, territorial uh, territorial government jobs are taken in all the communities, and people tend to hang on to those. So, just that being said, Madam Chair, um, I'm in full agreement with the member. I'm willing to listen to. Uh, steps to go forward and uh, before this hits the floor of the house but uh, thank you so much for your support uh, Emily Bontrush, thank you Thank you Emily Jacobson um, uh, Caitlin, you want to make a comment? Thank you very much uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair <clears throat> I'd like to thank the MLA for appearing before committee this evening uh, to answer questions of committee members I really appreciate it um, my, my first question for the member, Madam Chair, is I'm wondering if the MLA can uh, explain a little bit more about why he felt that this bill was necessary. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, the reason I brought this bill forward is because my office was, we were getting too many people phoning the office saying they're disconnected and then um, they were living on uh, some elders in the community, in outlying communities as well, were living off of 15 minutes of power. So when you get a limiter put on your house, uh, you get, I guess, 10 or 15 minutes of power, and then it shuts off. And then being from the smaller communities, the coastal communities and the houses, um, they're pretty cold. Um, they need a lot of repair. So when a house gets cold in a, at minus 50, with the wind chill, it cools off quickly and the furnace ain't gonna, it doesn't have time to catch up to warm up the house. So your elders are getting sick, it's unsanitary, you can't cook suppers for your family. Uh, it just, it adds on to the stresses of living in, of, you know, of basically uh, check to check. And it, you don't need that. We don't need the stresses given to, to our constituents when we're in a, able, in a position to make change, in a positive change, to work together to get the repayment plans put back into place or make it easier than being disconnected and and uh, just being shoved out the door and uh, hurry up and pay, then we'll put you back on. And if uh, that happens, you're good. If not, you're 15 minutes of power. And it's too tough on elderly and families that uh, with lower income. That's why I brought it forward. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, I want to thank the sponsor of the bill for bringing it forward. I think it addresses some um, important matters of public concern for us. Uh, I think he's brought it forward with good intentions. Um, and I think we should be encouraging our uh, colleagues to bring forward private members' bills. I think it's uh, an important way to uh, move and change public policy. Um, uh, you know, I, I said publicly that I'm ashamed to admit that I didn't even know that there were limiters here in 
in the Northwest Territories till a couple of years ago. So I want to thank Mr. Jacobson for for bringing this uh, issue uh, forward. Um, and I think it's probably helped enlighten a number of us that are privileged. Um, uh, I do agree with uh, some aspects of the bill, but there's some other aspects that I, I'm not sure I can quite support at this point. But I think what it, it has highlighted is how complicated this issue is of uh, people um, getting into arrears uh, over power bills. And uh, there seems to be a disconnect between um, income assistance, uh, public housing, and uh, what the utilities are doing and how they're communicating with their customers, what the Public Utilities Board is doing as a regulator and uh, maybe not protecting, uh, dare I say, uh, the interests of um, individuals who are power consumers and not ensuring that they get good information from the, the utilities about what happens when you go in arrears and so on. So it's a very complicated uh, situation. I, I, and I'm not sure that the, the bill really um, addresses all of the those issues and players, uh, uh, but I think that committee can and probably should bring forward a number of policy recommendations to uh, try to deal with this uh, so that people don't go into arrears uh, uh, as best as we can prevent and that limiters are not necessary in the first place. Uh, you know, uh, uh, unconscionable that we actually have to use limiters or that they're allowed. So. Uh, Anyways, Madam Chair, I just want to thank the sponsor again for bringing this forward. I'm not sure it, it's going to solve everything, um, but you know there are things that we can and should be doing to uh, make sure that the Public Utilities Board does a better job, the Utilities do, uh, uh, Board does a better job uh, in uh, directing what information is available to customers, and that I think there's improvements that we need to make in income assistance uh, and in public housing to make sure that, that people um, get a basic human right, which is housing. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Emily O'Reilly. Um, do you just want to give a brief comment, Emily Jacobson? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, O'Reilly for that, uh, his comments and uh, going forward to the bill, um, you know that it's so true with the disconnect with the ECED Housing Power Corp um, that we, if we tighten it up a little bit better to work better, like fine tune the policies in regards to people being put on income support and being helped uh, to help pay the power, um, I think that's a good, good step on the way forward and it, I just want to highlight this because it is an issue in the small communities. You may not see it in Yellowknife and that, but in Tuck, Sachs, Paul Tuck, Ulu, uh, Wati, all over the territory, the small communities people are hurting and they're not saying nothing and I want to be their voice to, and we're in a position to make change now. It doesn't have to go through the whole, the, with the bill, it could have the updates and stuff like that, but something has to happen. Public Utilities Board have to step up to the plate and make them accountable. And as a government, and we own that as an asset, we should be the ones that are able to, to make change. Thank you, Mr. Madam Chair. Ryan, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Emily Jacobson, for bringing forward this bill. I, I guess I'll start by saying if the bill was simply to eliminate the use of power limiters in the Northwest Territories, mm -hmm. I would support that. Um, I, I don't think it makes any sense to be throttling someone's power 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off. It, it just seems like some sort of you know torture for someone who's already living in poverty. Um, and I'll note that the bill does more than that. It's essentially the same legislation that exists in Ontario that prohibits winter disconnection. And I think the, the area I'm having the most trouble with is mandating reconnection. Um, committee actually re reached out to Ontario and, and they expressed that this mandated reconnection was, was the most costly aspect of Ontario legislation in that having to, you know, fly in, in our case, you know, to Ula Huk Tuk to, to reconnect people um, is quite an expensive endeavor for the for the utility. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think 
there's a bit of a debate here in my mind. At, at what point does someone simply just stop getting power, period? If they are thousands of dollars in debt, do they just get their power cut off um, get reconnected until some sort of payment plan is in place? And so I guess I would welcome Emily Jacobson's thoughts on it. He thinks there is a line where, you know, you just you stop getting you stop paying your power bills and it's racked up to thousands of dollars and and that means disconnection regardless of season or or whether you know this bill as it's proposed we should treat power more as a you know essentially a right that you if you own a home you get a right to power for it and the collections is a separate uh, effort so I would welcome Emily Jacobson's comments on yeah when permanent disconnection or long term disconnection is is viable, or I guess as the legislation, if it's not. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Emily uh, Johnson. I, uh, do you want to just comment briefly on that, Emily Jacobson? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, um, Mr. Johnson, no. Disconnection, I guess we'll start off with that one, was the disconnection. It's uh, the person in uh, Hay River that has uh, your power limiter on the file and they just type in the number then they'll put you on a limiter so there's no cost for them to come into the our outgoing communities to um the, and there's no cost to it so it just somebody in yellow uh, hay river that just does the disconnections and everything out uh, with through a computer i could stand corrected but uh, that's the way i was told that it happens so in the consumption for them, it's just uh, pushing the button and it's done. Um, up north, uh, I'm positive once a person in public housing gets a power disconnection notice, they could be evicted. And then we have so many problems right now in the communities with being evicted, cow people, couch surfing, there's no, not enough housing, and families taking care of family. And it's, it's a lot of hardship on people. Um, for and people up here, um, I guess Mr. Johnson are more responsible for paying their bills. I guess I mean for myself, I mean as growing up as a kid, your house is your castle, and that's where you live, and that's what you got to take care of. And uh, younger, I mean, uh, you know, you you don't think about it; it's just a bill. But when you get uh, up in age, when you're having to pay for it, like uh, without your old age pension and juggling your funding, it's harder. But for myself, there's there's a I work with committee. I'd work with the Power Corp in regards to as a when you cut the power off, willing to listen to anything. But it just basically help me help you. I I, I we need to we need to fix this issue. We are able to do it and on a go forward. Um, I think um, working with committee, I'd uh, I'm I'm willing to listen to that part. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, and thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Emily Jacobson. Um, are there any other comments or whatever, or should I go ahead? Madam Chair? Uh, yes, Alisa? Yes. Um, I, too, would like to thank the member for bringing this bill forward. You know, um, in all the discussion that I've I've heard in the House from the member, um, from my own constituents, you know, uh, it, it's a bigger, I feel that it's a bigger picture than just the power limiters and i've expressed this as well you know i the the issue is is we're talking about majority of the people that we're talking about are in low cost housing are low income are seniors they all fall within an income support realm we have income support we have uh, we have venues for where these these bills can be paid there's a there's an issue where some people you know and we've we've raised this issue is you know sometimes it's pride sometimes it's people that they don't want to go to income support they are their fixed income they can men, man, they can manage within their bills but income support is there to supp supplement you know and when we talk about our riding my riding and uh, MLA Jacobson's riding the knuckle the cost of living in those regions 
yes, it's, 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 it's high and the cost of power and the cost, you know, and, you know, and and majority of the people living in housing units that are not energy efficient, which is increasing, you know, and the last, like I said, um, in the house that the, the, the government switched, housing corporations switched from giving people subsidized power to making them pay full power. And, you know, they have issues. They have issues with keeping up with that. But if they're on getting support from ECE, then ECE should be making up that difference. This, but there, the, it goes to the bigger picture is it's just, you know, government giving government money. Power Corp is a government. It's a crown corporation. We're government giving government money. We're just floating money around. Why can we not work with in each to make it easier for people who are in housing to have the subsidized power to make sure, you know, there's so many other things to this. So in one sense, I, you know, I'm glad that this is being brought forward and this discussion is happening. And the other sense, I, I don't support the, the 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 whole of the bill but i think it's a bigger picture that we need to fix within government and how we we move money around and then it's always the end user is our residents that end up with the burden so thank you emily and then from jack jacobson um emily jacobson you're on mute uh, do you just want to comment quickly on that thank you madam chair uh, thank uh Emily, um, similar uh, for her comments, and uh, no, it is, um, like you said, it is a crown asset, and we could make change uh, as uh, 19 members in the Assembly to, um, we got to remember, we work for the people of the Northwest Territories and the people we represent, and I'm proud of that, and uh, I really want to, small changes will make big, big steps for a lot of people, so I think uh, we're, if we could work together to try to get it done, I think we could do a lot of good things here. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So I was the I second your your uh, motion for the uh, I second your bill, uh, so it could be, so it come could come to committee. Um, um, I just want to correct a couple of statements because I know limiters are across the territories. It's not only in your region. Um, you know, because I've had a family member in the last month uh, who has uh, mental health issues and who has a brand new trailer, all paid for and everything, who fell behind in um, in the power bill because of not wanting to go for help and is on a fixed income, just like uh, Emily Zemler said. So I just gave her the money to go pay it. No, because uh, there are other parts of this, of the whole picture that you have to look at, and one of the whole parts is that we, it is a crown corporation, but it's already running into a deficit. Uh, there's also the issue of ensuring that we don't, we, we can't expect other members of the public who do pay their bills to cover that deficit overall in the end. And I think as a group, we have uh, looked at other options and we're willing to look at that, uh, uh, some of those options at Committee of the Whole. So, um, you know, I, uh, and I have a feeling for all, you know, you must, uh, you, know, you know, I have, I'm making these comments because uh, I'm one of the biggest uh, supporters of low income, uh, uh, people, uh, seniors especially, and um, uh, have been very strong on my convictions in the house and on the floor. So with that, I um, I just want to see if you have a comment to that, and then we can move on to uh, with the meeting. Yeah, Go thank ahead. you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, I'm uh, I'm in this. I'm. I know you're strong with your convictions in regards to the people that you represent, and you're a good, strong business uh, advocate too. And um, we, you do hold um, our government accountable for their spending, and um, I respect you for that. Uh, the biggest thing is I want this to—I have to bring this forward 
and um, the limiters are right across the Northwest Territories. And I like um, I know that the best thing what we should be doing is uh, the um, I think what we have to really work is work as a committee. Where I'll work with you as a committee to make positive change. And if I don't think positive change is going to happen, I'll bring it into the floor of the house. And I want to work with you. I just uh, I respect all the members that are on here. But at the end of the day, I I work for the people of Nanakput. I work for the territory people as a territory as a whole. And um, I think the the business aspect and the money part we could work work around like work around it to to make everything uh, uh, line up in regards to. Um, the because uh, it is true it, it is a crown asset and the the money is moved around from ec &E to housing to every all departments so it's a it's a, like a money grab so but i'm willing to work with you madam chair and the committee to make positive change in the public utilities act for limiters thank you thank you so we're going to go ahead with uh, the rest part of our meeting i'm just going to um does the committee agree that Bill 23, an act to amend the Public Utilities Act, is now ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole? Agreed, uh, Madam Chair. MLA Cleveland here. Okay. Well, MLA Cleveland moves that Bill 23 and an act to amend the Public Utilities Act be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do. Okay. Motion is in order. Motion is on the Madam floor. Madam Chair. Yes? Sorry. Um, MLA Cleveland will have to um, read the motion, please. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move that Bill 23, an act to amend the Public Utilities Act, be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MLA Cleveland. The motion is in order. Motion Question. The, the motion. Question has been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So everybody's in favor. There's no. There's no opposed. Motion is carried. Bill 23, an act to amend the Public Utilities Act, will, re will be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in Committee of the Whole. Um, thank you, MLA Jacobson. This concludes the public portion of our meeting. Uh, so, uh, members, we'll just take a two-minute break and we'll go, or and we'll go into debrief. Uh, Emily Jacobson, you're welcome to.